Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm good to see you. How's everything Man, going? Good to see you too. It's been a minute. How you been? It has. It has. It's, it's everything's good. So let me just introduce you real quick to everybody who just joined. This is my friend Edie Amin uh, or Edie Don, as he's known now from Outlaws. So um, you're joining me for Honey, I'm Home today. So we're going to just talk about how your life is during quarantine, how things have changed for you and kind of like where you're going with everything. So thank you for joining me. Man, thanks for having me. It's, it's, it's an honor and a pleasure, man. I'm a, I'm a fan from afar as well. Oh, <laughs> I'm a fan as well. That's so cool. It's, it's cool to be a fan of each other, right? <laughs> Definitely. It's dope. That's awesome. So how has your life been in quarantine? Where Are you in L.A. right now or where are you? Yeah, I'm in L.A. right now, man. I'm in, I'm in L.A. and we've just been extended. Extended, right? I heard the quarantine was extended. Is it until the end of July now? Yeah. Yeah. Man, we don't we don't have that here in in the Bay yet. Uh, we might get that news though real soon. I'm I'm waiting for it. <laughs> it's tough. It's tough, man. It is tough. But I've been good, man. I've been good. I uh, I just recently dropped a new album called OG Part Two Classes in Session. You know, I had started it prior to all of this uh, that was going on, but I um I finished it in spite of quarantine, and this album came out May first. And um, it's come out to some pretty good response, man. So I'm happy about that. That's awesome. It's it's a good thing you finished it, like, right before it got real, real crazy. Because it would have been probably a little bit more difficult. Unless you have a studio. Do you have a studio at your place? Or do you have to go elsewhere? No, 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 no. Like, I, I used to have a studio at home. But I like being able to get up and go somewhere. And, you know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of be in another environment. So I don't record at home anymore. I know. I see. I wish I had a studio at my house so I could just start recording and and I can't, and it sucks, because you have to, like, you have to go somewhere else, and everything's closed. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if I had a studio at home, I'd be super fucking lazy with it. Like, I, <laughs> all my music would be about chilling and fucking smoking and shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel about um, going to the gym. Like, if I have a gym membership and I'm paying, I'm way more likely to go and work out. But if someone's like, oh, just work out at home or, like, go on a run, it's so hard for me because I'm, like, not paying for it. And I feel like, well, then I don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, and that's the other thing that sucks about quarantines is that I, I'm the same way. I want to go to the gym, but I've been forced to keep my, my shit going. I got to do it at home and, you know, you know, go to the park and get some cardio in, man. Miss the gym. I miss it. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been crazy. So I mean, speaking of quarantine, who are you? Are you, who are you quarantined with? Are you alone? Are you with the fam? What's going on over there? No, I, I'm I'm with my quarantine bay, the fabulous diva pink. If you remember, she used to do. Oh, of course, duh. Yeah. yeah, of course, I remember. I don't even know why I asked. That. Yes, yes. She's she's a great woman. I love that girl so much. Yeah, she says hello too. She told me to tell you hello, awesome. and um, with her, and then we also have. Her two kids are out here right now staying with us, and um, they're both teenagers. And then my two youngest children will be coming next month. And so we're going to do the summer thing like we normally do with the kids. Ooh, a full house. There's going to be four kids, you two, in quarantine. Man, <laughs> how do you think that's going to go? <laughs> it's going to go awesome. It's going to be Good. awesome. Keep a positive mental attitude regardless. How has it been awesome. with how's it been with the kids um and and not them not going to school and not seeing their friends? How have they been handling it? They've been cool, man. You know, they both live in Georgia and so this is they're like on vacation now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. School is almost out. They're both great students, so they don't have a lot of work to do or any catching up to do. So they just basically chilling. You know what I mean? Uh the boy he he's, he plays a lot of NBA live. You know what I mean? And and the girl, you know, Diva's also a hairstylist, so she, you know, helps her out with clients and things like that. So we've been maintaining pretty good, man. Speaking of hair, I wish she would come and fix this going on here. <laughs> <laughs> if she saw my hair right now, she'd be like, girl. <laughs> oh, yeah, she'd be, she'd be trying to use a comb and do it virtually. Man, I'm telling you, without without go, being as a as a woman, I mean, it's hard for everybody in quarantine right now. But as a woman who you know likes to get her hair done, likes to get her nails done, the eyelashes, all that stuff, and I can't do anything, it's been such a struggle. Like having my roots grow out four inches, it's it's crazy. I can't. I don't know how to. I don't know how to bleach my own hair. 
Man, you preach it to the choir. That's why we're doing this interview and I got a hat on, man. Like, my main barber <laughs> is super paranoid and he won't cut anybody's hair until this thing is all over. So Why, why doesn't your lady do it? Well, she does, actually. She does. And so I'll be getting a haircut in a couple of days, but she does help out with that up there. Just been a minute. I've, so. I've been, I've become a barber too. I've been trying to do my boyfriend's hair and I literally have never cut anyone's hair before. First time. So he's like trying to tell me, oh, fade this and do this number. I'm like, whoa, hold on. So I've been yeah, doing man. that too. It's, it's a new hobby I'm learning um, in quarantine. Speaking of, what kinds of hobbies are you getting into that you have never really done before now that you're at home? Are you doing anything different? Shit. One thing that's different for me is I've been I binge watched five seasons of Breaking Bad. I had never watched Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad. Yes, yeah, you're so on I, Team Breaking Bad, Walter White all day. I am. <laughs> I am Team Breaking Bad, Team Walter White, and so I binge watched that man. I, I don't I don't get it with my schedule. I don't get a chance to binge watch too much, um, you know, too many shows. But I did. I'm like, you know, I've been hearing a lot about Breaking Bad, and I'm a huge Ozark fan. And people were like, Ozark yo, you like Ozark. Yeah, they were like, if you love Ozark, you're gonna love Breaking Bad. And so I checked out Breaking Bad and it was it was dope. Yeah, it's so funny though, because it, it, oh, Ozark and Breaking Bad are similar in a sense of like the suburban white family all of a sudden is like selling drugs and you're like, whoa. <laughs> it's such a good it. plot though. Like it's so it's so yeah. good. And 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 I, I I identify in some kind of weird way with Marty and Walt. I don't know why, <laughs> but I do. They're like that's so funny. <laughs> which okay, which one do you like better? Who's who's who do you think you'd rather hang out with, Marty or Walt? Marty, because Marty. Walt <laughs> Walt is self destructive. You know what I mean, and that's why it ended the way it ended. To anybody who never saw it, I don't want to spoil it, but right. basically that's why it ended the way it ended. Marty is super sharp and he's a survivor. You know, like you always imagine Marty winning in the end because he's so smart. You know what I mean? Well, Walt, Walt like knows he's he's dying. I mean, everyone uh, uh, hopefully knows the premise is like he he's dying, he has cancer. Right. So I think like he doesn't care. He doesn't care if he self destructs because what has he got to lose, right? At that exactly. point. So exactly. Um, exactly. My he's favorite going. my favorite character on on Ozark is definitely Ruth. Ruth is oh, yeah. the best. Like I want to hang out with her. I want to be her friend. I feel like she would protect me from anything. Like she would always have my back, and I love her. <laughs> now, nah, well, you 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 uh. You, you you sound like Diva right now because she loves Ruth. You know what I mean? <laughs> Ruth is her favorite character. She's now a fan of her as an actress. So now we see other shit that she's played in, and we're like, oh, there goes Ruth. There goes Ruth. Yeah, right. and her it's crazy yeah. because her accent is is obviously fake on Ozark. Her little like Southern twang, where she's like, shut the hell up, y'all. Like, but then she doesn't sound like that's that. A good, in that's life. a good impression right there. Jackie, I will thank you. <laughs> very good. <laughs> if anyone's if anyone's hiring the new Ruth, I'm uh, available for work. <laughs> so um, breaking yeah, back. Yeah, bad badass. So I like Ruth. Yeah, yeah, she is. Have you been uh, binging anything else, or just Breaking Bad has been your your main go to? Uh, of course, The Last Dance. The Michael Jordan. Wait, say that again. The Last Dance. The Last Dance, like say, like from way back in the day. No, the Michael Jordan documentary. Oh. oh. <laughs> I was like, save the last dance. Like, what? You remember Save the Last Dance, right? <laughs> That's what I thought no. you meant. And I was like, you're binging on that movie? Like, are you watching it over and over again? <laughs> Just right. up I ha actually haven't and seen. And shit. I haven't seen the the documentary yet. That's why. That's literally why I forgot what it was called because I've been meaning to watch it and haven't. So it like slipped my mind. But um, my dad watched the entire thing. He said it was really good. Oh man, it's incredible. 10 part documentary series. We're on the last two episodes coming up this summer. I'm a huge basketball fan, so I'm suffering without the NBA right now. Who's so your team? Who you got? Lakers. Lakers all day long. You know me, Dubs, Warriors all day. <laughs> I know, I know. That's that big. It's been hard. Right? It's been hard without it's been hard without sports. Like I, I know that's not a big thing for a lot of people, but like it's been hard without basketball. Cause I'm basketball's my number one too. And it's just been like, I I'm two blocks from the from the chase from the chase center where the Warriors play, and like it sucks not being able to go to a game. I can literally walk over there, and it's been it's been pretty quiet. And then like I just watched the UFC game a few days ago, 
and just watching it with like no crowd there. So it was kind of cool, but it was weird. It was a weird feeling to see I that. I can imagine so. And then talking about bringing the NBA back and, you know, doing it with no fans and, you know, I'll take anything at this point, but that's yeah. gonna be, it's going to be different. It's going to be funny, though, because without the fans, you can hear things a lot more. So, like, for, for example, UFC, there were no fans, and you could every punch and every hit, you could hear it, like, on camera. You could hear them breathing, and normally you can't. And so I think with basketball, it'll be the same thing. You'll probably hear them, like, shit-talking with each other more, and you'll hear, like, little things going on that you normally wouldn't hear because the microphones are just on them now. So it might yeah. actually be kind of – it might be kind of interesting to see it like that, but – Man, yeah. like I said, I'll take whatever I can get right now from the NBA. You know what I mean? So long as it's competition, 10 guys on the court going at it, sweating, and, and hopefully playing for a championship that I felt like L.A. was going to get this year. Yeah, yeah, well – the Lakers, I should say, because I know it's a lot of Clipper fans out there too. <laughs> Talking about the well, Lakers. if I, I, I'm obviously not, I'm not an LA fan, uh, but if I had to pick between the Lakers and the Clippers, I would go with the Lakers all day, regardless. So that's what's up. Definitely, what's up. yeah. <laughs> no that's offense to anybody. Up. Um, we're going to keep talking and having a conversation, but of course, if anybody has any questions for Edie in the comments, like feel free to ask. I, I haven't really been paying attention because I just wanted to catch up with you, um, but I'm kind of scrolling up. I, Snow bunny, I am a snow bunny, correct. <laughs> I'm reading all the comments. I've been called that my whole life. Um, let's see if there's anything. Unborn thug, tell us a memory from Pac. Do you have any like fun stories you, you want to share, maybe? Um man, too 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 many. Too many. Give me like uh, give me like a really random funny story that's not anything like serious, nothing like that. Just something that was really maybe just like funny if that happened with you guys. Well, some of, some of our best times were uh, in the studio, obviously. And uh, Pac was a, a complete practical joker, especially <laughs> if you started to fall asleep. You know what I mean? I'm sure you've heard the stories. He had more energy than most people. And so when it's 3, 4 o'clock in the morning and everybody's starting to slowly but surely tap out from the Hennessy and, and the Kush, <laughs> Pac would be up. And if you fell asleep, he liked to uh, he liked to play some practical jokes, and one of them was heating up a quarter with a lighter and 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 sitting it on your arm. No. <laughs> Wait. So and what would happen? Like, like, I never. It got would leave like it. a it would leave like an imprint on your skin. Not all the time, but that shit burns like a motherfucker. It will wake you up. Oh man, that won't just wake you up. That'll send you. That would send me screaming and calling the ER. <laughs> Oh man, that's funny. Yeah, see, we like stories like that, kind of fun. Um, I was talking to Money B a few days ago on my live too. Money B, so, what up? Money yeah, B, yeah, yeah. So he told me he told me a funny story. I, you can tell me if you agree with this. He said that he, that Pac treated um, co uh, what was it? Co shrimp cocktail. He thought it was like a delicacy, and it was like his favorite thing. And he thought it was like this really fancy food when it's really not. And he told me that he loved eating that stuff like it was his favorite thing in the world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's see, any other any other questions? O4L online, how about telling us what you were thinking on the last photo you posted with Tupac in court, you're seen in the back, what were your thoughts at that moment? Shout out to O4L online, that's actually my partner, Vegas. That's a that's my partner Vegas at O'Fallon Online and that website. Great mm -hmm. question, Vegas. Um, I was actually, you know, when whenever Pop went through any kind of court issues, you know, we always wanted him to be victorious and to, to be able to come home with us. And I, um, I forget what that actually actual court appearance was about, but I remember thinking, you know, I can't wait to get up out of here. You know what I mean? And I don't want him to uh, obviously go to jail. You know what I mean? Hopefully, he's not going to go to jail today for whatever, you know, for whatever it was. Because he was always, at some point during his career, facing some type of legal issues. So right. I, that's what I was probably thinking. It's a long time ago, so I don't remember my exact thoughts. But I can right. tell my look on my face. I'm like, yo, please, <laughs> let's just get the hell out of here. It's definitely cool to have 
have memories, even if they're like not the greatest memories in court, no one wants to be in court and things like that. But it's cool to have a photo and a memory like that, that you can look back on and be like, wow, that was, that was a crazy time. Or like, that was a long time ago. Yeah, it's, it's really amazing how many photos, new photos at that continue to keep coming out. And you just don't remember when you're in the moment, you don't remember that person sitting over there taking a picture or, you know what I mean? You just yeah. don't, you're not thinking, you're not posing, like, make sure you get my good side and shit like that. <laughs> in, you know what I mean? You're in the moment and these pictures just, just keep coming out no matter what. And with social media and, and, and YouTube and things like that, it's just like, um, he, he never left. He's, he's still here in a weird kind of way. He's like omnipresent. His spirit is omnipresent. But what about all those conspiracy theorists that are like, oh, he's living on an island with palm trees and eating grapes. And it's like, yeah, OK. <laughs> what do you do, do? People ever ask you about that? And like, what do you say back to them? All the time. I can I can screenshot to my DMs right now. And, be amazed <laughs> and people are serious. Like they are. They're not. Oh, yeah. A lot of people aren't even trolling. Like some people are trolling, but some people are dead serious. I've actually had people argue with me and say that they know that I know where he's at and I'm lying <laughs> to the world and I'm keeping it a secret. I've actually had arguments with, not arguments because I never argue back. You can believe what you want to believe. But right, you can't, you if, can't, uh, if you argue back with people like that, you're just, be, you're fueling their fire and you're giving them absolutely. something to, any, any type of, whether it's questions like that or whether it's a hater coming in like you suck, it's like giving them that back is what they, that's what they want. So if you don't give them that back, all of a sudden they're like, oh, shit. I'm like, OK, they back off. hundred percent. hundred percent. So I usually just ignore most of it. But, you know, um, what I feel about it is that, you know, he was he was a, um, he meant a lot to a lot of people. And so it's like a family member. You know what I mean? And not having that family member, you want him to be here no matter what. And um, if you can have some small some small hope, you know what I mean? And, and you can believe some wild conspiracy that they're still somehow here. That's better than dealing with the reality that, you know, um, they may be gone forever. You know what I mean? But shout out to my guy, Delatier. He, he just uh, posted in the comment, he lives in all of us. And, you know, I, I agree with that. You know what I mean? It's a little pocket in everybody. So he still lives no matter what. Yes, definitely. I mean, I think he will forever and ever and ever, like in the next even in a thousand years, people will know. It's kind of like, it, he's on the same level as like the Beatles or Madonna or whatever. Like people are going to know his name. My grandkids, 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 like they're going to know who he is, which is crazy. They're gonna be like, back 300 years ago, there was this rapper. Yeah, it's gonna be wild. <laughs> um, so back to you. Um, I know people probably ask you about Tupac all day long, but I want to know about you and what you're doing. So ha have you put have you had to put any projects on hold because of quarantine? Like, were you planning on maybe going on tour or doing anything that you couldn't do anymore because of all this? Well, of course, the travel is definitely impeded. You know what I mean? We had some overseas dates coming up that we were looking forward to. Shout out to all the Paris fans that were looking forward to their first annual hip hop award show that we were going to be performing at and presenting an award at, man, super. Uh, disappointed that we didn't get a chance to do that, but hopefully it'll be postponed and we can continue to do that. Also, all our Australian fans that were looking forward to our tour of Australia later oh, this man, year. Oh, man, that would have been fun. Yeah, man, and we've toured Australia many times. It's one of our um, our biggest markets. They, they support our music, you know what I mean, for years, for the past 20-plus years. So, of course, travel is impeded, but that just had, gave me time to focus on some other projects, that I wanted to work on. Um, I, I wrote a book a few years ago, and I finally got to finish that book. So be on the lookout for that book. It's called Street Fame. I'm dropping it later this year. Um, oh, that's cool. Tell me, what, what's the premise of it? What is it about? Well, the premise is super dope, and if I told you about it, somebody might steal it before I could. Oh, it. okay, okay. You can tell me. You can tell me in private, and I won't. Yeah, I'll tell you in private. <laughs> we'll, we'll do that off here. You know, I mean, okay. there's too many biters out there, man, and they'll steal your shit like that. You're but right. You're right. I will tell you this. Just so you know, it's not about me and it's not about Tupac. So if you're waiting on that book, you're going to have <laughs> to keep waiting because I'm not doing that book right now. But Street Fame will come out and it's a very dope book. And it's something that I hopefully uh, I can bring to the world visually. I'm going to give it to you first as a book and then I want to bring it to the world visually as well. And um, 
I got a chance to finish that. Like I said, I got a chance to, you know, get back into music and finish OG part two. You know what I mean? Some of you know, some of you may not know, but the past few years I've been doing festivals. I did two of the biggest festivals in LA along with my partner and my team at Welcome to the West. Uh, we did years one and two. First year we had Nipsey Hussle as our headliner. Rest in peace to him. Um, definitely got a chance to get to know him a little bit better during that process and glad I had that opportunity. Shout out to JP and the whole All Money in team. And then uh, last year we had Ice Cube as our headliner. And both nice. of those festivals were, were, were very successful, man. Shout out to everybody who participated in that, all the artists that participated in that. And so that's a new passion of mine as well. I'm also co-managing a really dope new artist by the name of Elena. Go follow her. Be on the lookout for her. She's dope. Female MC slash singer. Um, I can't wait to uh, people really get 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 a load of that that ball of fire that 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 is Milena. And um, you know, I got a chance to get back into music along with work on all these other projects that I that are passions of mine. That's really cool. That's um, especially the book. I mean, I I'm actually curious. Like, what is the process to write a book? Obviously, you don't you don't have to tell me what it's about, but like. How do you get started with that? And then how, like, how does that all work? I've actually always been curious on the process of, of writing a book. Like when an artist decides to write something, like do you actually write it out and then someone edits it? Or how does that all work? Um, actually, I did everything myself. You know what yeah. I mean? For the, for the first one, I just wanted to do it all myself so I can know the process, know what it takes. You know what I mean? I will say this, I have a newfound respect for writers and authors because the shit ain't easy. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not like, you know, it's not like I had somebody sitting there with a tape recorder and they just transcribed everything. I actually wrote this book from... Like you were sitting there typing for the days whole and weeks and months. How long did it take you to finish it? The book took me a couple of months to write, but it was the editing. You know, um, there's a process to writing. So you write, then you rewrite, then you rewrite, you change characters, you do this, so it's, it's a process. The whole concept of the book was done in, in about a couple of months, but the process of getting it to this point right now, I would say years. I would say yeah. it took me years because I would, you know, of course I got other things that I was doing, so I would do other stuff, then I would come back to it, do other stuff, come back to it, and then I just left it alone for a couple of years, actually, and didn't even work on it at all. And then, you know, the whole uh, virus and COVID-19 started happening and I had all this free time and then I was able to finish it and edit it and edit it word for word. And yeah, it must, be, it must be frustrating. I feel, that gives me anxiety just thinking about like writing a whole book and then having to go back and fix it and fix it and fix it. I feel like I would like pull my hair out by the time, by the time I was done. So that's that's a really, that's a really big accomplishment. That's probably like, like I said, that, shout out to all the authors. Anybody yep. that wrote a book, I don't care if you just sold one copy or you sold <laughs> millions. Salute to all of y'all. Cause you make me want to you make me want to write a book, and I don't even know about what. But that's like now now I'm motivated to like go write a book about something. Yeah, man, we all should write, man. We should write every day, man. Even if you don't write a book, you should have a journal if you don't. I recommend that for everybody. It's something that, something else that I do, you know, um, as a form of therapy is just writing in a journal. You know what I mean? And I remember having to do that in class and hating that shit. When my teacher would be like, all right, everybody pull your journal out. We're going to write in our journals today. But I see the benefits of it now. You know what I mean? And writing with the pen is, is power in the pen. You know what I mean? So make well, sure. When someone, when someone tells you to do something, that's when you don't want to do it. But when you decide you want to do it, then it's, then it's empowering. When someone's like, you have to do this, then you're like, then you don't want to. So I, I totally get that. Um, another thing, another thing that's pretty cool, um, something that my boyfriend started doing, which I might start is like every morning when you wake up, write down your dreams from the night before. Yeah. And um, they say they say that like, when you write down all your dreams, that's like that could make like the best movie ever because it could be super wild. And it could give you an idea for like a screenplay or a book or whatever. Because because in your dreams, you can think about anything like anything goes right. There's no rules in there. So just yeah, waking I've up heard, every morning. I've heard that before too, man. I probably smoke too much of this shit though, because I don't remember none of my dreams. <laughs> well, when you smoke right before bed, that's when you have the most wild dreams. So sometimes, like, I have the craziest dreams, and then even if I wake up at like three in the morning to go pee, like, I'll, you know, that's when you gotta write it down at that moment.
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna That's try. Like the, bi the big smooth. I see their comment, Jameson and Weed today. That's a song that, that I released recently, Jameson and Weed, which is oh, funny yeah. because I wrote that song like three years ago, just never, and was like, nah, I don't want, you know, when you write a song and you're like, nah, it, I don't know, I don't know, and then you just don't release it. And then I decided during quarantine just to release it because I had nothing else to release because I can't record. So yeah, thank you for listening to that. Um, I love Jameson too. Actually, it's one of my favorite beverages. It's my favorite. Know. I don't, I don't <laughs> drink nearly as much as I used to. It's funny because during quarantine, I feel like Me most either. people are drinking more so because they're at home and they're bored. Everyone's like, oh, I just finished a bottle of wine and I'm having this drink. And I'm actually not drinking at all. I just, I've, I've always been a social drinker. So if I'm at home without my friends, I'm not going to drink. So um, I love Jameson. I have a whole bottle Big here fan. that's about this, like the big ones, and I barely made a dent in there. So I'm being yeah. good. Yeah, I'm a social <laughs> drinker too. I'm a social drinker and a solo smoker. But, um, you know, a glass of wine here and there during quarantine has been, you know, helping me get through here and there. But uh, I definitely can't just sit in the house and do Jameson, man. I'll be up in this motherfucker standing on couch, standing on my couch like I'm at the club. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, what exactly. The fuck it makes you me. Doing, man? Get it makes me wild too. Like I just like it. It gives me energy. So then I don't. I won't know what to do with myself if I'm drinking right. and I have nobody to like drink with or whatever. So I've just been smoking more myself, spending a lot of money on that. It's expensive. <laughs> it's an expensive it habit. Especially up there where you at. Man, tax is like thirty percent, or it's like the why. <laughs> It's the most wild thing. Like I will or uh, just two days ago, I ordered delivery and I got one. What did I get? Oh, I got one like tin of edibles, just like a little can of like 20 little edibles, five milligrams uh -huh. each, not that crazy. And I got um, like a Pax, um, like not the pen, but like the, the thing, whatever it's called, the vape stuff. Okay. And just those two things. With, together with the taxes, with delivery, with all of that was $90. I was like, Jesus. Yeah. And that's going to, I'm going to go through that like in a week. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. It's, it's pretty crazy, but it's like, you know, what can you do? You got to either, you got to either grow it yourself, which is really hard, or you have to pay the money for it or whatever. Yeah. So. Or buy it off the street. Right, which like, you know, now, first of all, nowadays, <laughs> I don't really, I don't really want to be around anybody right now anyway. But like, yeah, if you have a plug and you know them, it's all good. But if you, I don't want to ever go to somebody random that I don't know, I don't know what's in there. I'm just like, mm, I'd rather pay money and know what is going in my body kind of thing. But uh, I got a good dispensary right not too far from where I live. And, you know, they not too, they, they tax, but it's not, it's, it's not that bad. And, you know, it's close. So I go pick it up. So I'll pay that delivery fee. But uh, yeah, it's, it's it's difficult because you don't want to be around too many people. You want to just kind of get what you need and, and keep it moving. So I get yeah. it. I want to yeah, tell definitely. everybody one of my fondest memories of you, though. Real quick, everybody che checking in. I know somebody commented Snow Bunny earlier and all of that. But one of my fondest memories is I, when we were doing, you had your show at T-Radio V and I had my show. And I think I played, you were engineered for me. Yeah, One yeah, I was, I, I was, exactly, I was doing your show, I was like helping engineer your show. I was helping <laughs> engineer, and I played a fucking SIBO song that you <laughs> know all the words to, and that <laughs> shit almost floored me. That I remember that. that shit. <laughs> I, I remember that because I remember you, you said something on your show, and then like, I had answered you in the background, like behind the glass. And then I remember taking that clip or something and like put either you put it on your Instagram or I put it on mine or, or whatever. But I actually remember that really well. You, I remember you looked at me. Like, what? I told, I totally racially profiled you, yo. And I apologize for that. It's okay. I said, what is this little white girl? No, a SIBO. No, look, <laughs> even for, even for certain black women, to know a SIBO record and know the lyrics to it, I would be surprised. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's not just about race. It also has some gender to do with that too. I was like, wow. I like to and surprise people because sense. I, like I'm a very, I've always been this way where you can't tell what I like or who I am by looking at me. Cause I'm always very 
colorful. I have different moods. So like one day I could look like a goth if I feel like it. You could look through my closet. It's wild. The next day I could look more like a little urban or hip hop. Then the next day I'm just like wearing all pink like bubble gum. And, and so I don't think anyone can really tell what I like or what I'm into. But the answer is I like everything. I'm into everything. I'm like As very... You yeah, so... As you should. Yeah, I've always, all, I've always been like that. It's all here for all of us. But you are the definition of never judge a book by its cover. So thank <laughs> you for that. Thank you. you. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> it. I appreciate if it. If don't judge a book by its cover was a person, it's Jackie Hollywood. <laughs> I love that. Well, you know what? Don't judge a book by its cover. Whatever your book, the book that you're coming out with, I don't know what the cover looks like. But either way, don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. I'm super. I'm going to be dropping the cover to the book soon because I'm going to drop it in uh, late summer, fall. So be on the lookout for that. I will be dropping it. It should just cover. be my picture on the cover. And then, like, the don't judge a book by its cover will have, like, a double meaning because it'll just be me. And nobody will know what the book's about. They'll be like, why do you have this girl on your book? And then you open it and it's, like, something totally different. <laughs> <laughs> the, name of the, the name of the book is called Street Fame, too. So just imagine street perfect. fame under your picture it's perfect it's perfect i like it i, I like it. it i love it um any other oh doc dr dr089 hello from russia which is crazy that you're tuning in from russia because i'm actually russian um i'm 100 percent full russian a lot of people don't know that because my nickname jack in hollywood um but i'm literally have nothing else in my blood i'm not mixed at all it is so crazy that Everyone does that DNA testing and they find like traces of like Native American, a trace of African, a trace of Asian. And it's like, mine is like 100%, I'm Eastern European. Russian. I'm, yeah, like I'm, Russian. I'm a Russian Jew, like all the way, there's nothing else in my blood. Um, so it's crazy Russia when I see someone- Moscow. That's one of the last places that we performed um, last year and um, love Moscow crazy that's a, it's a crazy a place i mean i've only, i've only been there twice um i i was born here in san francisco so i went back there to see like where my mom was born and everything um my dad was actually born in the republic of georgia which is also over there but not russia but um mm. i went there to go check it out and yeah it kind of opened my eyes to, to russia a little bit more because i think people stereotype it as just like a really cold dark boring sort of place but when you go to moscow it's like party central like eh, it's lively the clubs are open like till six in the morning it's like vegas times 10. <laughs> yeah yeah and they get to they get into that money out there too you know what i mean of course there's poverty everywhere but there's um they ball it too there's some ballers out there in russia they like man. to drink right <laughs> they love to fucking drink man you leave up out of there and your liver will, will be in the size of a pit if if you because they you know it's almost um it's almost kind of like a sign of disrespect if they offer you a drink and you don't take it. So yeah. the people that we were with, they were like, you know, if you don't, I'm not a heavy drinker, so I don't, I don't drink every, you know what I mean? And so I would say no a lot, and they were like, yo, Edie, you know, they kind of, you know, it's kind of like disrespectful if they offer you a drink and you don't, you don't take the drink. And I was like, I just had to explain to them that I'm not that much of a drinker, but you know, I do drink when I want to and. Boy, we've had some epic nights in Moscow. Man. That's like when I, you I say no to food. If you say no to a Russian, like if you came over to my house and and my grandma made you some food and you said no, she wouldn't take that that no for an answer. She, you would have you would literally just have to eat it. You could go throw it up later, but you would have to eat it at that point. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And they like you know they don't ask once. You know what I mean? <laughs> they keep asking. Russians are persistent. They don't take no. For an answer, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, you don't want to drink, for sure. Are you yeah, sure? yeah. <laughs> and Speaking they know we drink Hennessy from the from the music. So like, we don't have Hennessy, but we have vodka, yeah, yeah. we have bourbon. <laughs> <and everything. laughs> Where has been your um favorite country to whether you're whether you just went for whether you went for like music or tour or just went for fun, like where's your favorite place? I know you said you like Australia a lot too, but um, do you have like a favorite city? Um, in Australia, yeah, Melbourne is my favorite, is my favorite I've city. been there. I like it, too. <laughs> yeah, Melbourne is dope. Melbourne reminds me of the Bay Area, actually, because it's by the water. And um, it, kind and it of, rains there a lot. It's like kind of it's hilly too. Yeah, so I love Melbourne. Um, Jamaica is like my favorite place to go vacation. I have to do absolutely nothing. You know, every time I go to Jamaica, I get a little bit more and more into the, the culture side of it instead of just um, the tourist side and staying on a, uh, you know, 
the resorts and shit. But yeah, uh, I love Vancouver. Vancouver is another one of my favorite cities. Um, Toronto, I love the whole country of Canada. Shout out to one of my guys that produced on uh, my new album, Old Man 80s. He's from Toronto. And my guy, Deuce Deuce from Toronto, love Canada. You know, the world is the world is a great, big, old, beautiful place, man. We just, uh, we also did Nepal late last year. Um, Catman Do, the capital of Catman Do, that was dope. Wow. I just like seeing different places and different cultures yeah. and, and humans, how they do it in their side of the world. It's just so. It dope. must be. Yeah, it must be cool to go to a, to go to a place um, like Australia or whatever Nepal or anywhere, and then playing a show and having fans like know the words and they're in a completely different country, and that must be really dope for you. Yeah, like, man, it's no better feeling. It's no better feeling, man. It's super dope. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, thankful for um, So I'm taking I'm taking more questions because obviously the Instagram live. Yeah, let's go, man. What's up? We have the limit about? of an hour, right? So um, I just want to make sure that we take any other questions that. Let me you know, send Bernie some shout outs, man, because a lot of my guys are checking in. Shout out to Lil Sodi. Shout out to Arnold Woolman, supporter, always supporting the movement. Delatie, I see y'all up in here, man. Much love, man. Appreciate yeah, thank you all. Thank you guys for, for joining the chat. Um, this is something that I'm trying to do every day or at least like five days a week for my Honey, I'm Home series. Just trying to get people in the industry that I personally think are really cool, whether they're musicians, athletes, um, comedians, whatever, whatever, whatever they're doing. Um, influencers, you know, if they're if I think they're cool and worthy, I want to see what they're up to during quarantine. So obviously, thank you for for being here. It's been like so many years since since I've last seen you. Um, we need to change that. <laughs> yeah, I keep up with you, though, via social media, and I've, I've been watching Same. you, and I, I, I expect nothing but big things from you. <laughs> you are a talent. The camera loves you. you oh, I appreciate I mean? it. I, I expect you to do big things out here, Jackie. And, um, you know, uh, as far as your platform that you're doing right now, I think it's super dope, and I want to thank you for having me on it. First of all, you know what I mean? Because you didn't have to do that. So big ups to you for hollering at the kid and, and allowing me to get on here along with I always had fun with you. I, I always had a really, like, a really good time every every week when you came in. Like, especially that memory that you said where I was, like, singing, doing the lyrics to the song. It's like things like that. You know, I was just thinking about it. And I was like, man, he was he was cool. It was, it's been a long time. And, of course, Diva is really awesome. And I, I want to move back to L.A. Um, I actually have, like, 100% plans to do so. But before wow. the end of the year is up, so obviously I'm, I'm trying to get get past this quarantine thing, and then um, I think around probably November ish, I'm planning to move back to LA and start. You gotta you know, with us when you come out here, man. Yeah, you I want to start like working out, out there man, again because I, I feel like that's where like I mean I love LA. Like I'm always not sports wise. No, I'm always gonna be a Warriors fan. It is what it is. But I love LA. I do. I'm an LA fan. Um, I love the, the vibe out there. I like the people. A lot of people have a misconception of, of LA people like everyone's fake and this and that. Are there people like that? Absolutely. Yes. But are there also real people like you? Yes. So, you know, that's what well, I want to People say that to me. People say that to me a lot. And I say there's fake people everywhere. You know They're what I mean? True. Yep. Is that going to stop you? Like, I don't want to move to L.A. It's too many fake people. Or I'm ready to get out of L.A. That's too many fake people. It's, that's really just a negative mental attitude right there. You know what I mean? I don't want I don't want no part of that. You know, I love L.A., man. I've always loved this There's city. so much to do in L.A. That's the thing is, like, you can't ever sit at home and say I'm bored because you walk outside, there's an event here, there's a concert there, there's a mall here. There's, there's, and I'm one of those people that, like, I need – constant um at, like entertainment i would say like i do i am a homebody and i like being at home certain days and just watching tv but i love living in a busy city where there's a lot going on so obviously Same san here, francisco man. san francisco is one of those cities but it's not as like jam-packed with stuff as la is you know and i love um, the bay area man my career actually started in the bay area in 92 with Pac when he was living out there so i always have fond memories and i love going to the bay but it's just nothing like L.A. Like you said, there's always something to do. You know, even if you want to be a homebody, being a homebody is cooler in L.A. than anywhere yeah. else, in my opinion. Yeah, because you can have a pool because it's warm. Like here, I can't I can't just sit out by the pool. It's cold here all the time. But when you go to L.A., the weather's nice, and you can have a drink by the pool. And it's like, it's just a, a, 
a nice vibe. It's not for everybody, obviously. There's, there's, it's, it's no. not a place for everybody, but it's definitely a place for me <laughs> and you. So. It's, it's, and that's what I say, man. You know what I mean? It might not be for everybody, but it works just fine for me, man. And um, I don't see myself going anywhere anytime soon. You know what I mean? I've lived there. I was, I was born in New York, New York City, Brooklyn. You know what I mean? Shout out to all my East Coast people. I love New York, love going back to visit. You know, I lived in Minnesota for a few years. So I know what the South is like, the East Coast, the Midwest. But, and so I can make an honest opinion. I've lived in all these other parts of the country and it's nothing like LA. It's nothing like California, man. Nothing yeah, like yeah, that. West Coast, West Coast, although I'm a West Coast girl. I, I don't think I could ever take a job like that wasn't on the wet, like somewhere in California. Um, yeah, that, I'm picky. That's that's probably why I'm like trying to get a, a full time contract radio job somewhere. And I know that I can probably get one in another state. But it's so hard for me to like want to leave my, my home, you know, so it's it's, yeah. been a, it's been a struggle because of that. I'm very picky about location. Well, didn't, but you, I, you, didn't you move? You moved, I right? did. Well, I moved to Phoenix. I moved to Phoenix for for a job, um, which is still West Coast, but you know, out of California. And I, after three months, I left. I, I quit. I know. Too hot. Too hot. Oh, it was too hot. I mean, there were there were there were a couple other reasons that I'm not going to get into. But I just I really I missed home a lot, and I felt like I felt like man, I really belong in California. And then after that, I realized that I'm probably not going to take a job if it's not in California because of. I've built my love for this place and yeah. um it's all about location for me and family and friends so if i don't have that i'm not happy i don't care it could be the best job in the world but i won't physically like be happy i won't mentally be happy so yeah yeah, um, I love LA. yeah. so I'll, i mean i'll see you there soon as soon as i move there it definitely will hit you up yeah, we got um, i just want to say thank you again to every single person that's in here um obviously most of you are in here for for Edie and thank you for you know coming in listening to our little chat I had a lot of fun um, and if you are on here through my side of Instagram definitely give him a follow if you're not already um, yeah, and I'll make sure all my people follow Jackie Hollywood she's super solid make sure you tune in to this show that she's doing after me keep tuning in keep <laughs> fucking with her you'll learn something and you'll be entertained at the same time Shout out to Outlaw RBG. What up, Zaid? Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you have the floor now. If you want to promote anything or whatever you want to say, leave the people with your last words. Now's your time. Well, most of my people that's up in here know about my latest project, OG Part 2 Classes in Session. Features from people like Burner and Be Legit, straight from the Bay Area. We also got uh, Jay Worthy on there. Outlaw RBG, Zaid Malik is on there. Of course, my brother Young Noble and Deuce Deuce, they're both on there on a great record call, I remember. So go out there and check that out if you haven't already. Um, be on the lookout, like I said, for my book. Be on the lookout for Milena. We will be bringing Welcome to the West Year 3 back. It may be a little bit different, but we're going to bring it back. Don't think it's going nowhere because it's not. Salute to all my Welcome to the West team. Shout out to my partner, Sinatra. Um, and, uh, you know, Thank you again, man. Just thank you for sharing this platform with me, man. It was good to see you. And uh, I look forward to when you get back to L.A., man. We go out and kick it and drink some J-Mo. You know what I mean? Smoke, Let's do smoke. it. Let's do it. Yes, <laughs> I love it. Okay, well, thank you so much. Again, thank you, everyone who's in here. I appreciate you. And I'm going to be doing another episode uh, tomorrow. It's tomorrow, Thursday. I'm supposed to have... Um, Johnny Laquasto on, who is a WWE sports presenter it's on tomorrow. Nice. So if you guys want to tune in for that, um, I love you. I appreciate you all. And thank you again. And I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Salute. Bye.